Good morning, everyone. It is time to visit with one of our favorite people here on the program. Lauren Merkel is joining us from Merkel Retirement Planning and talking about, you know, what you can do to really uh, sock away some money. And we were talking a little bit off camera, Lauren, about risk Risks. versus reward. Yes. Lou <laughs> is apparently a risk taker. I am a big time risk taker, but uh, the, the thing that I have to start considering is that uh, coming up in November, I'm going to be turning 59 years old. Yeah. And so I'm getting ever so close to where you're going to probably have the ability to draw off of some of that money that we're trying to save. And is this the time when I should be uh, aggressive or is this the time when I should be downshifting a little bit? Well, I love the fact that you have the appetite for more risk, but the, the question is, is now the time to execute? You, know, you just went through the Iowa Speedway and through the, the racing. Is this the time to put your foot fully on the pedal? Okay. 2008 was the last recession. And so we haven't had one for the last 11 years. On average, we have a recession every three and a half years. So most people feel wow. like a recession will happen sooner than later. What, what happened in 08 is our 401ks got cut in half. Mm -hmm. And that's when they started right. calling them 201ks. <laughs> right. Is, is that going to happen again? At some point down the line, either sooner than later or later than sooner, it's going to happen. Okay. So do we want to put the, our foot all the way on the gas? Can we let off a little bit, even though you have the, the appetite for a little bit more mm -hmm. risk usually? Let off a little bit. Don't get fully eaten up by this next recession when it does happen. And then when the stocks are down, ex put your foot back on the gas and exercise your appetite for risk. Start buying them up again? Well, well. Is that, is that what you do? Is that is that the strategy then? or? Well, how you make money in the market is you buy low, you sell high. Right. Unfortunately, most people don't do that. Most people just ride the ride of the market. So is now the time, and I'm not even saying, what I'm not talking about is market timing. Market timing does not work because you have to be right twice over and over and over. You have to be right to get out, and you have to be right to get, to get back in. in. So I'm not talking about timing the market, I'm just saying, De decrease your acceleration a little bit potentially. Okay. And then when this recession does happen, put your foot on the gas and exercise the full capacity of the risk that you do have. But now you, that's but easy. You, so you say it will happen. It's just a matter of when. It will happen. It's just a matter of when. Okay. Markets are very cyclical. And right now we're just kind of out, outside the normal cycle. So it's going to happen. Now the economy's still wrong or, or they're still strong, but there are indications that the economy's slowing down. So if, if you turn on business, business news, channels, you're going to hear them talking about this impending recession. Now, the hard part, and this is what makes makes timing really difficult, is they've been talking about this now since 2015. It's just it's it, a it, long it hasn't time. happened. And that's why market timing doesn't work because you go in cash and you sit there and cash through 15. 2016 was a decent year in the market. 2017 was a phenomenal year in the market. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting here in cash, after from, since 2015 is 2017 that when you're going to get in after we've had a, a great amount of appreciation 2018 so you're just still sitting in cash wasting wasting time, time yeah. and money okay you talk about you make a point here about how back in the recession of 2008 that the people that didn't realize the, the risk that they had in their portfolio do you find that with a lot of people they just they aren't really aware the awareness of what risk level they're at with things that they that that's a big thing because most of the time i ask people i say how much risk are you taking and, and their response is i don't know and one of the most tragic parts about 2008 is most people had no idea that they could lose 50 percent of their life savings within a 12-month period of time it took them 20 to 30 years to save this money to build it up mm, and just yeah. like that it, it went. what was the primary cause for that uh, being being vulnerable like that, where you lose all that. I, I think the primary cause is just lack of awareness. Yes. We we don't know. Most people don't know how much risk they're really. Was taking. there too much invested in one area? Uh, lack, lack of diversification. Lack, lack of we, diversification. We, we okay. talk about that quite a bit at our passport mm -hmm. class. We we invest in these types of investments that we have always been taught gives us diversification. And that's true when we're 25, 30 years old, putting a little bit away per pay period, that's what those traditional types of investments work well for. Okay. But once you've accumulated a little bit of wealth, what happens is you have these mutual funds and maybe you have 10 different mutual funds. They have this, th these different names, different companies. You feel like you're diversified, but if you lift the hood 
and you actually see the individual holdings underneath there, there's a lot of overlap, which means this mutual fund owns AT&T. This other mutual fund you own also owns AT&T, and this other, they all own very so much the same thing. So you could have a couple of different ones with the same. <clears throat> right, so you, you feel, you get this illusion. You feel you have diversity, of diversification, right. you really don't. But in reality, they all react very similar. So if one of those stocks, for example, takes a hit, you're gonna be hit on, if you have it in three different areas, you're gonna be hit on three different levels. That's exactly but it. on just one, element. That's right. Wow. Be yep. Because, think because there's that. not that overlap. So this is an excellent opportunity. We're sitting here mid-year 2019. Mm -hmm. We've had a great run up the first half of this year. So now is a great time to do a portfolio checkup and make sure that you're comfortable with the amount of investment risk that you're taking. And you need to put a number around it. And when I say put a number around it, what I'm not saying is, is Lou on a scale from one to 10, are you a five? No. Are you a seven? Right, yeah. that's not the type of number we need because a seven, especially if you're working with an advisor, because a number system like that leads a lot of room for subjectivity. Oh, really? A seven to you might mean something completely different to me. Uh, so how would you scale it? It's like, how do you, how, gauge yeah, how do you determine? What, how, what the real comfort <laughs> level is there? Let's say you have a $500,000 portfolio. Mm -hmm. During this next recession, that $500,000 is gonna lose 200,000. There is no subjectivity with two hundred thousand dollars. Right. Everybody at this table knows what that means. I just, I just gasped a little bit when you said that. So the the question is, when you hear it is out loud. <laughs> are you comfortable with your portfolio losing two hundred thousand dollars? Now, when you take investment risk, you know during the next recession your portfolio is going to lose. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how much does it lose. Are you comfortable with it? Will it derail your retirement? Will it make you come out of retirement? will make you postpone your, those are the important questions. Is there something you can do to uh, minimize that risk? You said 200,000 is what you're, and basically what you're saying is, are you, this is what you're willing to lose with the amount of risk that you're taking. Is there a way to, to temper that? So that maybe it's, it sounds bizarre, but only 100,000 with, with that, when that, things shake down? That's exactly it. That's a whole idea behind this. There's two things with risk is one, how much risk do you need to take? Here's where you are. Here's your goals, here's your objectives, here's what you're trying to accomplish. How much risk is it going to take to get there? And do you feel comfortable with that amount of risk? And if you don't, then yes, you can temper that portfolio risk and cut it to whatever amount that you do feel comfortable, whether it's 100,000, 50,000, 100, wherever you feel comfortable. That's the most important thing though, is make sure that your risk aligns with your comfort level, but also with your plan objectives. But decreasing the amount of risk that you take too, you're also decreasing the amount that your portfolio could grow then too, aren't you? We, we, we classify two main types of portfolios, high volatility portfolio, and what we've always been taught is risk equals reward, mm -hmm. and then low volatility portfolio. And what we see is that there's a different kind of math than what we've ever been taught. It's called retirement math. So once you're five years from retiring or already retired, the math works completely different because really? now you're in this phase that you have to start taking money from your investments. And when you have to start taking money from your investments and your portfolio loses, now it exasperates the, the diminishing That's effects like two holes of that in the portfolio. Bucket. Yeah. That's exactly it. So we have, to, we have to, and this is probably one of the biggest points of this conversation here today. Whatever investment portfolio you choose to put together, there has to be a purpose behind it. And that purpose needs to be customized to what you're trying to accomplish. What we all end up doing is we go through our working career and we just accumulate what, we, what I call a junk drawer full of investments. Mm -hmm. And it's nobody's fault, it's just we're living life, raising kids, paying off our house, we're doing all these things. And by the way, we're putting a little bit away every pay period for retirement, which is exactly what we should be doing. But then we end up on the doorsteps of retirement and we have all this different stuff, investments, with no real purpose or intention of how it's going to get us to retirement or how it's going to get us through retirement, even in the midst of a recession and needing to take income. Right. So whatever way you choose to organize your portfolio, there needs to be an intention and purpose around each bucket that you have that's going to get you to and through retirement. Would this mean have a financial goal in mind, a, fin a financial target? Yeah, so this, take this piece of your portfolio. How does it work in conjunction with maybe a pension, if you're lucky enough to have a pension? How does it work in conjunction with the 81 different social, social security options that you have? Mm -hmm. And then how is it going to deliver an income for you at point of retirement 
but then also combat inflation and taxation so it's going to be there for you 20 years later and you're not going to run out of money before you run out of time. There you go. It's a lot to know All right. and a lot of unknowns. Now, uh, <laughs> Merco Retirement Planning, uh, you have sessions where people can come and learn about the strategies which are phenomenal. Uh, tell us about these. We, we call this our Passport to Retirement class and we hope this is about a two and a half hour long class and we talk about the five main components of retirement planning. After about 20 years of helping people successfully retire, I boiled down a lot of the concerns, a lot of the objectives of retirees and, and boiled that into five specific components. And we go through each one of those at the class. Social security, so income planning, tax planning, healthcare, long-term care planning, estate planning, and then of course the investment piece. And you have a couple of different places around town, one right down the street? Yeah, a couple okay. different places, okay. uh, usually universities mm -hmm. around the metro area. Okay. We don't charge anything for the class. What we're trying to do is, is help educate, educate people as right. much as po possible, make the best decisions as they go to and through retirement. All right, people want to find out when the when next session is, when, when can we do that? Go to, go to MerkleRetirementPlanning.com and uh, you can see different events and, and this class is mostly geared towards those who are within 10 years of retiring okay. or already retired. All right. Very good. Great information. As always, always learn something when you come over. Lauren. Thank you. I really Help appreciate us all live having. large in our uh, <laughs> older years. <laughs> the, the better we all do, the better this country is. Yeah, definitely. Right.